In the video game Tekken, hero Jin Kazuma needs to fight his way through the final round of a deadly martial arts competition, the Iron Fist Tournament. When the first version of the game came out in 1994, stun star Cyril Raffaelli was no different than other kids in his small town in Normandy. I was a fan of that game. It was pretty cool. When a character punched you, you could catch him and redirect him. It was a whole revolution in the game. We definitely played it a lot. Well, 15 years later, on the set of the movie Tekken, inspired by the video game, Cyril is still, in a way, in full control of the gamepad. And I think I rule very fast. Wow! Yeah. As the film's fight choreographer, his mission is to guide stuntmen and martial artists as they transpose these spectacular virtual fights onto the reality of the big screen. For actors, action movies are often a one-way ticket to stardom. But this relies on the skill and expertise of stunt performers, whose job it is to take the hits. Stunt professionals normally work in the shadows, but the story you're about to see depicts their real life. And in this movie, they are the stars. Shreveport Fairgrounds, Louisiana. Inside this coliseum, rodeos and basketball games have been put on hold. For many weeks, this building has been hosting the ultimate martial arts event in the futuristic world of the movie Tekken, the Iron Fist Tournament. With a script calling for nine major fight scenes, the producers of Tekken never had a doubt. To create these fights, they definitely needed to bring in the most sought-after fight choreographer in the world. They told me about the project, and it sounded like fun. They needed French stunt sensation Cyril Raffaelli. We didn't want just the standard punch, punch, block, punch. We needed something that was much more, uh, much bigger, much more flamboyant, had much more character to it, and felt like the video game. So when you see Surreal's work, I mean, he's, he's the foremost fighting expert right now in the world. And there was nobody else really to go to. He was the guy. He was the only guy on the list. Today, the crew is entering the last stretch of the shoot. With eight major fights already in the can, Cyril and his fighters now have to deliver the final fight of the tournament. This is definitely one of the most important scenes in the movie. The moment when hero Jin Kazuma must take on the defending champion, Yoshimitsu. Get ready for the next battle. Well, we looked at the video game a lot. We spent hours and hours looking at the video game. It allowed me to see some of the moves, the evolution of the characters and their style. So I had a guideline, but I didn't want to just copy the game. And it's true that some of the moves are not realistic, just like in the game, but what we've done is not totally surreal. For me, every fight scene is important. Some people think the last one is the biggest, but not me. Each one is unique, and you have to be careful that they don't overlap. I'm always pushing that the first can't look like the third, the second can't look like the fifth, the last can't look like the first. They all have to be different. You don't want people in the theater to get bored or leave. Everything has to pop. Shooting this kind of fight, where the fighters have to learn and perform close to 50 moves, is a long process. And with only three days left in the production to do it, there's no time to lose. Most of the choreography Cyril created for Tekken were rehearsed weeks in advance. But ironically, with so much on his plate for this production, Cyril ended up creating this fight, the final one, at the very last minute yesterday. 
I did this choreography in about half an hour. We had to be fast because we were shooting the next morning. Luckily for the performers, the action is divided into small sequences, demanding only five or six moves each. The segments are shot one at a time, but not necessarily in chronological order. A fight scene is like a puzzle, where each piece finds its place in the editing room. In martial arts movies, stuntmen are rarely asked to perform their choreography in one single sequence. It is possible to do a fight scene in one take. It's been done before, but not with actors and stuntmen working together. For that, you need great chemistry, and there's usually not enough time to build that. But it is possible. Well, the Chinese do what's called a mini-master, which is three or four shots. And in that, they still ask for as much of the choreography as possible. To do a master shot is to be far from the action and be able to cut into the shots and get close-ups of the interior. In that case, we have to do the choreography from A to Z. If you're good, it goes well, but even if you screw up, they can always use some of the angles and moves that they didn't have already. Today, the team concentrates on segments that are going to take place at the beginning of the fight. As the shooting moves along, Cyril takes advantage of every break to revise his choreography with his fighters and to rehearse the upcoming moves in between the shots. There's three levels of speed. When we show the actors, we do it very slowly and mechanically. It's called the Japanese. We get the right positions every time. Then we have what we call a fluid. This is for the mind. When you have 300 moves to remember, you don't care about the precision of each move. No need to talk, just do it. So you do the fluid, and then a good Japanese. This is how I work with the actors. When the Japanese is ready, we do a fast one. We'll stop at the punch. Then you go faster and faster. It's crazy how fast you can go. Even the actors can do it. <laughs> Lead actor John Fu is a spectacular martial artist who also works as a stuntman on occasion. And in the black suit, playing Yoshimitsu, is Gary Stearns, an experienced and versatile stuntman specializing in Japanese weapon handling. One of the main... Uh reasons we hired Gary is he's done a lot of Chinese movies and he's an unbelievable martial artist but he learns it like this and when he's rehearsing with John he could say okay hey throw a punch here throw a kick here and can gui guide him through it so you know with all his expertise of everything he's done he was a perfect fit for this show stunt coordinator Eric Norris sure knows what he's talking about Son of actor and stuntman Chuck Norris, he literally grew up in the world of stunts and martial arts. In fact, the guys who hired Cyril Raffaelli are all considered top guns in their own specialty. Action movies belong to the Americans. They know how to do it well. In France, we're still rookies of the action movie. Unfortunately, the big difference is money. On a French production, we can't do as many takes, we don't have as many cameras, and not as much crew. Look, yes, and boom. I like, uh, I like with the, the, the stairs, it's good. As a stuntman, one of the things I like about the States is that unlike in France, they have breakaway tables, they have false stairs. You know, it looks so real, and I'm like, okay, this is how you guys do it here. It's cool. In America, working in English is something else Cyril has to adapt to. It's good, because after you did, you did, uh, you did, yeah, it's not bad. 
But the language barrier is just another thing stuntmen enjoy jumping over. I, I totally understand what he was wanting me to do, even though I probably didn't understand exact language, what he was saying. But, uh, you know, it just clicked in my head, and, you know, and he, he knew I understood what he was wanting. Why not? Because you are here, and you know, the first it's bah, and the number two, blah. Okay. I guess uh, martial arts and, uh, and uh, film combat is an international language. Oh, bam! Oh, yes, you know what, to, to make it... When I talk to the director or even the producers and they don't get it, I try to explain with the English that I have. And the rest, I show them in movements because I know the movements. I can do them all. The bottom line is, and it doesn't matter if you're Chinese, American, French, Russian, or whatever it is, we're all in here making a movie. We're all trying to be creative, and we're all doing the best job we can. So it's a total collaboration. I mean, Cyril has an idea of what he wants to do, and, and we all have the same goal at the end of the day is, is to do the best and, and make a great movie. Good. Good job, you guys. After a few hours, stunt coordinator Eric Norris is satisfied with the execution of the first part of the battle. But that doesn't mean it's totally in the can yet. For hours to come, stuntman Gary Stearns and actor John Fu will do the same moves over and over so that the cameras can capture the action from multiple Roy. angles. <coughs> but now that this part of the choreography is locked, Cyril can leave the arena and walk outside to the second unit where a different type of action awaits him. Cyril Raffaelli may be Hollywood's hottest fight choreographer right now, but his stunt expertise goes way beyond simply martial arts. As a stuntman and actor, he recently worked on the action flick Live Free or Die Hard, starring Bruce Willis. He also choreographed the mind-blowing fight scenes of the movie The Incredible Hulk. And the stunt team he's created in Paris now travels all around the world to perform all types of stunts for movies and commercials. On the set of the movie Tekken, where he acts primarily as a fight choreographer for the martial arts sequences, Cyril was also asked to conceive of a very different stunt scene taking place in a completely different setting. Alors effectivement, on a deux plateaux, deux équipes avec des actions qui se tournent en même temps. Donc de temps en temps. Euh comme on n'a qu'une doublure et qu'un seul chorégraphe, bah on passe d'un plateau à l'autre. Past those walls, movie magic takes us to the ravaged city of Anvil. In this stage setting, inspired by the video game Tekken, Cyril had to create a spectacular chase where the hero Jin Kazuma jumps up and down roofs and alleys in his attempt to escape a gunman trying to kill him. Just like a combat scene, this chase had to be broken down in segments, most of which have already been shot. But tonight, as the first unit continues to shoot the final fight inside the arena, just outside the door, the second unit is about to shoot one of the two remaining segments of the chase. Mohamed Elashi is part of Cyril Raffaelli's French stunt team. In this movie, he acts as John Fu's stunt double. During the fight scenes, John is able to perform most of the moves himself, and only the very delicate segments are left to Momo. But when it comes to jumping up and down balconies, this is definitely a stuntman's job. In this case, it's Momo who doubles the lead character since the scene is a little tricky. So the idea is for him to jump from the dock and land on the bar, but only with one foot. It's a really small bar. But then from the bar to the roof and down to the ground. This is the first character of the chase, but others will join the action soon. Okay, guys, this is a rehearsal with the jump. Three, two, one, action! Although this sequence was planned and rehearsed well in advance, a camera rehearsal is necessary. In the stunt industry these days, safety cables like this one are commonly used. With the advancements in digital technology, they can be easily erased from the scene in post-production. But where Momo and Cyril come from, it's a whole different ball game. Cyril and his friends are considered some of the original creators of parkour, 
an urban phenomenon that originated in Paris a few years ago and quickly spread all over the world. Our style is more acro street, urban, meaning difficult, high-level acrobatics without crash pads, without anything, from roof to roof, in real environments. Could be in the street, in a forest, or wherever. With his friend David Bell, who eventually co-starred with him in the acclaimed movie District B-13, Cyril was the first to post some of these videos on the internet. Just a few years later, free runners from across the world now contribute to the development of this new discipline by sharing videos of their own on the World Wide Web. I get emails from kids from Japan, from China, who've seen these videos and they've sent me photos of them doing the same thing. When we were in LA, there was a bunch of kids doing parkour and they recognized us. I was with David and they were really happy to meet us because we were the ones who started this style. So we went off with them to play and shoot for four or five hours. Sometimes they showed us things we didn't even know. It was wild. We respected them. All of a sudden, these kids have adopted parkour and acro street and made their own mixes, and now it's everywhere. And in the movie Tekken, there will be parkour and acro street in the ghetto of Anvil. All right, so let's light those fires and let's get going, man. Momo, you ready? Three, two, one, action! Allez, allez, allez! Recalcule ton pas, Momo, parce que là. Right from the start, this gigantic set was specifically designed to accommodate the most demanding free runners. Well, this is the first time I've uh, worked with uh, uh, Cyril and Momo, but uh, I'd seen their work before on YouTube and everything, so I, I knew the sort of style of what uh, uh, what they did and the sort of structures they used back and forth. So basically, what we what we started with was we sort of did did our basic designs and we would show it to them and, and make some models and say, oh, here's here's our set and here's. Here's some things that uh, might be a good option to run and climb and jump and use like that. And then, of okay. course, they get into it and say, ah, oh, let's make it a little bit further. <laughs> and action! For instance, when we put all this great duct work up, uh, they took a look at it and it was like, oh, well, that would be perfect. We put a car under there, jump up on the car, get up on this add a few more pieces, and then we really get to use the whole set, which is great fun, and that's why it's there. So, uh, kind of uh, a little jungle gym for all of our guys to play around with and use as much as possible. Great. And cut. <laughs> Very nice. Good, Good job, yeah, yeah. Good job. After this perfect take, it's a wrap for today, and the set breaks for the rest of the night. Tomorrow, both units will pick up just where they left off. It's a new day of shooting on the set of the movie Tekken. On the schedule this morning, another segment of the final fight between hero Jin Kazuma and his opponent, defending champion Yoshimitsu. Actor John Fu, who's playing Jin, is definitely an outstanding martial artist. But today, the fight is getting more acrobatic, so some help will be appreciated. Now, it's stunt time. We'll start with the most dangerous ones and we'll take turns. When he gets tired, I take his place. If there's something really dangerous, I do it for him. The stunt double comes in only when there's a real risk. Why? Because even if the actor can do it himself, we can't take the chance of him getting hurt during a sequence. If he does, the movie's over. As soon as we feel like we're at the limit, we call in the double and he takes the risks. I know it's a shame because the stuntman can hurt himself, but not the lead actor. While every department on set prepares for the scene, stuntman Gary Stearns gets ready once again to become defending champ Yoshimitsu. We're gonna do, the, we got a few wire 
uh, gags on it. And uh, one, the one I'm gonna do is it's just a, I'm do like, give me a little toss and I'll do a triple wrap, which the wires wrap around me. And three rotations, then that's where I land and we'll go pick up right to where I kick him. And then there's another one where uh, I slam John over to the ground. For the wardrobe department, creating costumes that would stay true to the characters of the video game was a major challenge. A virtual fighter is one thing, but practicality is another. The suits needed to have a certain look, but they also had to respond to the needs of the fighters on set. Obviously, this is a, 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 a bigger outfit, so we have room to, you know, put harnesses and stuff, but like, you know, working on the other shows, you know, everybody wants to de design a sleek, small costume, and then you obviously have bulges and stuff where you're in, you know. So we try to find a happy medium, you know. We try to bigger's better for us. Yeah, exactly. The more room we have to move and, and put, you know, pads and stuff underneath, depending on what we're doing, the better it is. So yeah. So I love this part of the costume. It's great. Just you know, the other part's a little more restricting because it's a little bit heavier. But you know, it's it's the character, so it looks awesome. Yoshimitsu is one of the main characters of the original video game that first came out in 1994. Since then, he's returned for all subsequent versions of Tekken. The next Yoshimitsu. For Gary, a player himself, this armored fighter represents the ultimate evil character in the game. Well, actually, I played it a long time ago because it, it's been out for years. Yeah. And Yoshimitsu is one of my favorite characters, too, so it was kind of cool to get the opportunity to come in and, and do it. You know? So after I came down and found out they, they wanted me to do Yoshimitsu, when I went back, I couldn't, go, couldn't find it in the store anywhere, so I ordered it online and got it and, and got the character and just played him and watched all his moves and stuff like that to try to inspire some of the choreography and sneak in some of his, you know, patented moves that, you know, we could, we could do. That's why a lot of times you see me spinning around, a lot of the blocks spin, spin, you know, it's because trying to play up to what some of his moves were in the game. And a lot of his moves are spiral stuff, which we couldn't do a lot, but that's why I'm trying to do the double wire wrap, stuff like that, just to put a little more spin stuff into it, because that's like his patented moves. Like most of the stunts in the movie industry, a successful wire wrap is, in the first place, the result of a team effort. Mike Lee is a stunt rigger and stunt man himself. As Gary will be attached to one end of this wire, Mike will be looking after the other end. Right on cue, he'll need to lift Gary up so the wire, wrapped around Gary's abdomen, will unroll and make him spin three times in the air before landing in a perfect position. Three, two, one, go. Oh, trouble. There you go. Nice. Three, two, one, go. After a few rehearsals, synchronization is getting close to perfection. But with his mask on, Gary can't rely on any visual references while spinning in the air. Add this to the delicate challenge of landing on these steps, and you've got quite a demanding stunt. If we can stick to landing, it's going to be awesome. A stuntman interrupting a scene like that leaves no doubt. Gary is hurt. Something went wrong on the landing, and one of his legs seems to be in bad shape. Go uh, rest it for a second. Normally, I could spot the ground to land it. Even though it was on steps, it's still been difficult. I, 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 it's pretty much a blind landing. So when I came down, I really tried to lock the landing and just kind of overextended it a little bit. And as soon as I hit, I thought, you know, I feel like I almost broke it, to be truly honest with you. This quick medical check reveals that Gary strained his knee badly, but luckily, no bones are broken. Normally, this type of injury would call for a week of rest. But in the stunt business, injuries are simply part of the game. The final fight of the Iron Fist tournament is not over, and Gary is determined to finish the job. 
I knew that once once I had it checked out, it wasn't a wasn't a tear or anything like that. It was just a, a strain. So I knew that I felt comfortable. Just even though it, you know it might be a little pain barrier, but that I was uh, I was game for it. Went over, you know, kind of had to walk it walk it off a little bit. Yeah. There's been a lot of times where stuntmen have been injured or stuff like that, where they just stepped up and and knocked it out again because that that's your job, you know. If you're not broken, you can do it again, you know. So uh, just kind of suck it up and, and and throw it out there again. Just do the last turn. Okay, great. Just do the last turn right in the frame. Okay, ready? By shooting the landing from this camera angle, the director secures the option of editing it in continuity with the triple twist. For Gary, this is a good way to test his knee. But he will not be satisfied unless he can do the whole sequence all at once, as it was originally planned. <laughs> this time, though, Gary will only be given one take to pin it down. One last one. Risk management is something stunt coordinators are familiar with. And if Gary aggravates his injury in this difficult landing, he could be out for the rest of the shoot. <laughs> perfect landing after a perfect twist. Gary's leg, although painful, is still in working order. Eric will not have to use his plan B. Good and bad about Gary's, you know, outfit is his face is covered. So I would have had, you know, I have uh, one of our stunt riggers, Mike Lee, is here. I would have stuck Mike Lee in that costume and rehearsed all night and brought him in to finish. But Eric does not have such an option with John Fu. So for the next scene, where Jin is being thrown away, Momo needs to be brought in. If I get injured, they're going to have a problem for them, like for the production. When I worked as a stuntman, they'll throw me off whatever. Just jump, you're gonna jump off it? Go, go for it. But yeah, obviously I have to be a lot more careful. I've got responsibilities. Knowing he can count on Momo, Cyril could beat up Jin's character pretty bad in his choreographies. Yeah! This scene, shot a few days before, is a stunt that a production would never risk doing with a lead actor. The stuntman's job is also to protect the actor from the beginning to end. An actor is like an egg. You can't break him because a broken nose can shut down production for weeks. It's crazy. Momo's cool. I think he's got talent and he's got a good attitude. He's really good. Okay, John may be grateful to his double for this one. But in comparison to what Momo has on the menu tonight, he hasn't seen anything yet. Tonight, with the backdrop of the Anvil Ghetto, the second unit is preparing to film the last and most exciting segment of the scene, where Jin Kazuma is chased by a gunman. On tonight's menu, we jump from an 8 meter high roof to another. That's pretty high, so it's risky. And it's seven meters across. It's a big jump and pretty dangerous. You can't bank on it until it's done, so you have to be prepared. They're ready to do the running on the roof at the end, though. Yeah, okay. Yeah, ready. Once again, Momo will be the one stepping into Jin Kazuma's shoes to perform the jump. Playing the gunman, who's also gonna have to jump, is another one of Cyril's men. Russian Ilya Nikitenko is a former gymnastic champion, now living in France and working full-time with Cyril's team. When the French arrive on set, a safety setup has already been put in place. Cardboard boxes are piled up between the two buildings. This installation is intended to serve as a net, should Momo or Ilya miss the jump and fall down. And on the roof of the second building, the one they're actually supposed to reach, a crash pad has been fixed to make landing softer. This does not seem to make Cyril very happy. No cables, no crash pads is what we want. Real jumps between buildings. What we're after is realism, and that's what we want for this sequence. But ultimately, on this set, Eric Norris, as the stunt coordinator, is the person responsible for the stuntmen's safety. And he knows from experience that the jump can still look very real on film without taking this type of risk. 
Et là, bon, c'est vrai que je sais que les Américains. I know Americans are strict about safety because an accident on a set is a serious thing and can affect the atmosphere of the production. Pour euh, tous, toutes les conséquences. For second unit director Doug Arnikowski, who's in charge of the set tonight, this is an easy decision. Cyril's boys will have to do it the American way. On les accepte parce que. We accept the American way because when we decide to come shoot in the U.S. We have to cooperate with their working methods. In France, where he often stunt coordinates himself, Cyril likes his men to spend weeks training specifically for a scene, using the exact parameters of the stunt. Measuring the same distance, the same height. That's the way we work with Cyril. Cyril's technique is to make his stuntmen repeat the same move over and over until their body and mind become totally conditioned to accomplishing it perfectly. Before the film crew shows up, performing the stunt must become as natural to them as walking. So natural, in fact, that for only one take, they're willing to do it without safety equipment. We're not crazy, I and mean, that's the first thing to know. There's a lot of work before and during the stunt, I mean, it may seem crazy, but so much goes into each stunt. Il y a vraiment, vraiment, vraiment un travail énorme avant. Avec les bras aussi. Yes. But with all the fights he had to look after on the set of Tekken, Cyril couldn't prepare his boys for this jump as well as he wanted to. Plus tu vas mettre ton pied au bord, moins tu auras de distance à faire. Cyril would finally agree to use the boxes and the mattress, and in exchange, Momo and Ilya were allowed to do the stunt without any safety cable. It's really a mental game. Everything happens in your mind. Là, bon, le moment, quoi. For these professionals, a few minutes before the stunt, it all comes down to mental preparation. Mais je veux pas un oui euh, pour me faire plaisir. Hein. C'est vraiment ouais, je suis ok, là j'y vais, c'est parti. Quand on tourne, bah, ça part. Bah, c'est vrai que nous, ce qu'on. It's dit, true what people say. They say we're like a tribe. Tribu, we have to be tight because we often find ourselves in very dangerous situations. Et des cascades quand même assez dangereuses. We know what it takes. Concentration, self-confidence. We have our little doubts, but usually they go away because of the feeling of support that comes from the tribe. We're colleagues, but we're also friends. If one guy goes down, we all go down. So, when one guy is about to do a stunt, we're all there. Five or six guys, Right behind them. We often talk about it after. Whoever was doing the stunt says, I could really feel you guys supporting me up there. And I was ready. Ready to go up? Yeah. Okay. For these guys, who free run on Parisian roofs on their day off, the real risk is to underestimate how dangerous this jump really is. So Cyril, as their mentor and leader, wants to check for himself that they are mentally ready before the director calls action. Mais c'est pas parce qu'il est facile, c'est pas parce qu'il est easy qu'il faut le négliger. Jamais, jamais sous-estimer. Tu vas comme si c'était un putain de grand saut, ok? On connaît cette distance, on l'a déjà faite, mais on la connaît sur quelque chose de dur. We know how far it is. We've done it before. It's familiar because we've already worked it. When we see a crash pad and we don't know how to land it, we get a little skeptical. But it's good because that way we don't get hurt. It's a matter of habit. C'est pas, mais on est. C'est une question d'habitude, quoi. Ce que je vous disais tout à l'heure, si jamais vous avez un rebond qui est quand même puissant sur le toit, donc si vous vous sentez que vous partez, vous poussez sur le toit et vous allez de vous-même dans les charpentes. Si vous tombez debout là, vous touchez le sol. Si vous tombez à plat, vous touchez pas le sol. 
Dernière consigne, on subit pas, on rentre le saut. À l'atterrissage, on fait attention. C'est-à-dire qu'on reste présent jusqu'à l'atterrissage. C'est pas parce qu'on a fini le saut qu'il est terminé. Donc même à l'atterrissage, vous êtes super présent. Dès que vous êtes dans, dans, de l'autre côté de, du, du saut, bah, vous continuez vos, vos, votre, votre lancer, OK Et accélération, vous ne faites pas semblant. C'est-à-dire qu'il n'y a pas le droit à l'essai. C'est le premier, c'est comme si c'était le cinquième. OK OK Vraiment OK OK, vraiment. J'y vais. Le parfait truc, ça serait que tout. The idea would be if everyone was ready at the same time. That's not how it is. We're gonna go. Si on veut pas y aller, if you don't feel it, you don't do it. But if you feel ready, go for it. Faut y aller, mais faut vraiment y aller. On peut pas You can't stop in midair. Once you go, you go. Dès qu'on est parti, on est parti. Ça va y aller. Okay guys, vous rentrez dedans. For these French stuntmen, it's time to show their American clients that they could never find better than them in Hollywood. Roll cameras, please. Let's lock it up. Allez! Sean, are you set? Good. Here we go. Three, two, one, action. Thanks to Momo's abilities, the ice is now broken. Good job, Momo. Momo, reste où tu es et tu fais ta suite avec Ilia. Oui. Je peux le refaire s'il veut. Oui, non, mais c'est bon. Attends, pour l'instant, on n'a pas besoin. Attends, attends, Momo, Momo, Momo. Momo, tu restes en haut du matelas. Tu le laisses partir. Dès qu'il est en vol, tu te casses. Dès qu'il quitte là, tu te casses. Good job, Momo. Momo's jump is a success, but it's now the bad guy's turn. And all the pressure is suddenly on Ilya's shoulders. There's a moment when fear comes in, but you have to get over it. This is a natural movement for the body, but then you have this height that's reminding you you can fall and hurt yourself. The mental preparation, it's, it's forgetting everything around you and just letting the body memory do its job. And then you do it. Ilya! Tu OK? Tu l'envoies quand même, c'est pas parce qu'il l'a fait facilement que c'est facile. Ok, good. Reste concentré, Ilia. Vous l'avez dit, hein. in the park. Everybody's happy, but Cyril is now more determined than ever to give his clients a little more than they were asking for. They too would like us to do it without any tricks because it makes the film better. But they always think, what if something goes wrong? That's what goes through your head. People there were like, oh my god, what if he doesn't get to the other side? It's normal. It's what everyone thinks. So we played the game, but we had an idea what we wanted. If we did rehearsal before, we can do just one shot without everything. I could see it in Ilya and Momo's eyes that everything was cool. And from there, I only had to convince the American. 
now, no more in New York. It's very easy. You want 10, no problem. No problem. And no down on the roof. Mm -hmm. Up. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Now, right. pad hey, and box. No, no box, no pad. Because good. now we know. Good. Well, it's a good rehearsal. Okay. We saw it. We, we saw it. We had to Now we shoot it. Now we shoot it. Finally, Doug gives in. We showed them that we knew what we were doing. We had mastered the stunt, so they saw we knew what we were talking about. At that point, I looked at Eric Norris, the stunt coordinator, and said, trust me, everything's good. So after that, we said, get rid of the pads and boxes. There's no use for them anymore. We can cover that distance, even a meter more. Now, the same jump, but no pad and no box, nothing. That, now it's good. <laughs> For the French team, this is a gratifying victory. But it's now time to deliver, and Cyril has to make sure that nobody here loses focus. Qu'est-ce que je t'ai dit? Je t'ai dit, c'est pas parce qu'il est facile qu'il faut le sous-estimer. Donc je voulais que vous soyez dedans. Ben moi, je suis un peu là pour ça. Je suis un peu là pour. That's the reason I'm here to push them, and. I have an advantage because I've done it myself, so there's a direct form of respect. D'avoir fait moi-même les choses, il y a un respect direct, quoi. Et comme je les connais vraiment. Since I know these guys well, I know what they're capable of. Si je sens qu'ils sont pas sur deux ou si je sens qu'il y a. If something's wrong, we can talk about it. Où on annule ou il y a discussion et. There's no way anyone's going to get hurt. That's our trademark. We've never had any accidents. No tremblem. We've never had any accidents. All cameras, please. Without the boxes, the camera can now shoot from this spectacular angle. Three, two, one, action! Cut! Cut! The second time, you know what's going to happen. You're there and you live the thing. You can have fun with it and make a few moves in the air. Okay, here we go. Let's roll camera. The shot looks great, and everybody is safe and sound. They did well, these kids. They're happy because they got a good shot, and we're happy because we got to do it our way, live. And that's what we came for. Thank you, guys. Good job, guys. Thank you, everyone. Before that, John, Mark, you get the place for our Thank you very much. See you tomorrow. Thank you. See you later. Today is the last day of shooting on the set of the movie Tekken. All together, Cyril and his men have been working on this film for three months straight. As the rest of the crew breaks for lunch, they decide to stay on set, where they have their own way of relaxing. On est comme les requins. Et ouais, si ça arrête de nager, il meurt. Faut pas oxygéner les, les poumons. Nous, c'est pareil. Sans ça, de bouger, on meurt. For Cyril. Training with his friends and exploring new moves is like second nature. And so is performing in front of a camera, no matter its size. Years before he worked on his first movie, Cyril understood that being able to do the moves is not enough in this business. In Hollywood, every performance is only as good as how it looks on film. I'm from a village of 300 people. I started to train by myself with my mother's old video camera. Today, I'm in Hollywood, working with Bruce Willis. To see all this machinery, helicopters exploding, it's incredible. You say to yourself, wow, I'm here, living the dream.
Donc il y a ce phénomène du cinéma qui est vraiment la starification. Stardom is good, but ultimately there's a more humble and human element, which is in those short videos. Even though now I play leading parts in the movies and all that, I still make videos with a small camera and edit them into short clips. We put them on the web. You know, I'm grateful that I've stayed the same. With my guys, with my family, with my friends. I see Hollywood as just another small village. Well, at Tekken Village, the crew agrees on one thing, that for the past three months, Cyril and his friends' casual training has been the best show in town. Every day, it's almost more fun watching them when they're off camera than watching them in the scenes because it's like the scenes are almost toned down of what these guys can do. No, I haven't learned anything. Um, uh, I'm trying to get Momo to teach me how to do a flip off of a platform, which is what he was just doing. And so first I have to do 100 dive rolls a day. That's what he told me, 100 of those dive rolls every day. And then I can uh, elevate up to the next level of actually trying to flip and land on my feet. You feel like Karate Kid uh, washing the floor. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, wax on, wax off. Yeah. <laughs> But as everyone returns from lunch, it's time to get back to work. With only half a day of shooting left to end this fight, time is running out. And Cyril is asked to cut a few moves out from his original choreography. On a production of this size, it's not uncommon for the fight choreographer to be involved right up to the very end. Choreography is like a puzzle. You can move it around, you can take the middle and put it at the end. So I just took out whatever wasn't necessary. Right over your camera, here we go. Three, two, one, With only one last shot to film, Cyril's work on this production is just about over. Editing a fight scene is an art by itself, and this one is out of Cyril's hands now. So just like the other Tekken fans, he'll have to wait a few months before he can appreciate the final results of his work. It's when we sit down in the theater that we see the real result of our work. The music, the sound, the special effects. Then we say, okay, this is what it all became. Three, two, one, action. After months of hard work, the shoot is over. Different language, different culture, that was a bit hard. Far from home. And now we've wrapped the movie and I did the best I could. If there's another one and it sounds good, we'll do it. And we'll do our best on that one and that will lead to other opportunities. We do what we like. I have no plans. I just go with the flow. No, they're, you know what, they're terrific. Cyril's come in and done, he's made my job easy because he's put all the fights together and, you know, I've really just come in and, and just made sure it's safe and hired the people and, I mean, I've used Momo and Elia for a lot of the big stunts just because they're, you know, they're such great stunt guys and they've done an unbelievable job and they've been here since the beginning and, I mean, you saw what they did last night, jumping from building to building. It's, it's tough to find guys that can actually do that. From a small French town to Hollywood, from the streets of Paris to the rooftops of Anvil, and from the internet to the movie theaters around the world, Cyril Raffaelli's moves have already traveled a long way. But with upcoming engagements on movies in Serbia and France, and with many proposals from L.A. on the table, Cyril's moves will definitely continue to thrill crowds on planet Hollywood. This is going to sound crazy, 
but I feel like a puppet who's controlled by passion and who's been given everything to make it happen. I love that.